Okay, uh, hello, I so welcome back. So this is the last section of this class. We will uh, discuss the, the exercise that we, we have left from last week. Also, uh, some exercise for this week. Okay, uh, first let's look at, uh, first of all, can you see my screen on the, uh, on the PowerPoint? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the first, the first exercise, uh, for last week uh, is a uh, is about a quality plan, right? Um, so quality plan is a uh, is a uh, is as we know it's in this in the in the SQL system. The quality plan is a pre project uh, stage, right? Um, and uh, also we we require you to have the quality plan in the first or some TP one. Right? Let's look at um, uh, what is uh, what should be included in quality plan. Basically. You want to have a list of, goal, of goals you want to evaluate, right? And then you, you should have a, a, a strategy for how to uh, verify these goals. That is, uh, these are the two things required in a, in a quality plan, right? So we require that for each quality goal. So you need to uh, state its uh, quality factor, sub factor, also might to a metric, okay? Um, so let's look at these examples. So, so you may have done this exercise and here we, we just want to check the, the results, right? Okay. Um, when you want to evaluate the quality of the software system, you make, you make a quality plan, right? So you have, a, so how to make a plan? Usually the practice is, is you, you, want, you have some quality factors you want to consider, such as a functional, um, um, like functionality factor or reliability, right? And for each factor, you have some sub factors. And for each sub factor, you define your quality goals. And for each quality goal, you may have some metrics to evaluate this quality goal, right? And then you, you may have some methods or strategies to, to, to verify these this goals, okay? Uh, let's look at these examples. Uh, the first one is uh, the first quality goal is uh, uh, the system shall generate uh, each day for each clinic a list of patients who are expected to attend the appointment appointment on that day, right? So this is a, a quality goal. So what is a quality factor and the sub factor? The factor is a functionality, right? The sub factor is functional completeness. So, so basically, this is a feature. So, we want this feature to be complete, right? So, what is the evaluation metric? Here, we don't have an evaluation metric. It's basically uh, the, the evaluation is uh, whether this is uh, this feature is uh, completed or not, right? How we can evaluate? What is the evaluation? What is the verification strategy? Or verification methods. So we can run unit tests to verify this unit. We can, we can run integration tests to verify this, uh, the integration of these units with uh, re the related units, right? And also we can run system testing to actually uh, look from a whole system point of view to check whether a feature is fulfilled. So that's uh, for the, this quality goal. And uh, whenever you have any question, you may raise your hand and or post it on Slack. We, we will get answers for that. Okay. Um, second, the system shall be available to all clinics during normal working hours. Downtime within normal working hours shall not exceed five seconds in each one day. Right. The so quality factor is reliability. The sub factor is availability. Right. And uh, the metric can be the average downtime per day, right? How to verify it? You cannot verify it using unit or integration testing. So here, for non-functional requirements, for most of the non-functional requirements, you can only use system testing or other testing, not unit or integration testing, right? You need to check the whole system. The third one, so medical staff shall be able to use the system functions after two hours of training. After this training, 
average number of errors made by experienced users shall not exceed exceed two per hour of system use. Uh, what is the what is the quality factor? User ability, right? What is the sub factor? Uh, the sub factor can be can be two. Learnability, two hours of learning, right? Learning a uh, learnability, and uh, user error protection. So after user has been trained, how you can prevent the users from making mistakes? So two sub factors here. Evaluation metrics. So we have one metric: average user error rates after two hours training. On average, how many errors a user make in one hour, for example, right? How we can verify it? Method can be uh, user acceptance testing, right? The users can actually do the training to their employees and also to, to measure the and reduce usage error rate. Okay, so that's our exception testing. Or you can use a, a system testing to test it with, within your organization to train those people who are not familiar with this uh, product, okay? Mm. And also I forgot to mention that, so here the quality factors and sub factors are usually from some standards, right? So here I use the ISO 2500 series standards that define uh, the list of factors specifically from, from the ISO 25010 standard, right? Yep. And also there's a, also micro course quality model, right? So there they define quality factors as, and sub factors. Personally, I like this uh, 25000 series standards because they, they are more like a current standards, okay? The next one, the system shall allow a thousand users at the same time. What is the quality factor and sub factor? Uh, the, the factor is a performance efficiency, right? Sub factor is a uh, capacity. And what is a metric a throughput? So throughput measures how many users uh, use it at the same time, or like uh, how many requests are produced at the same time. Okay, throughput. This is a throughput, and uh, how we can verify it. We can do a load testing. We can simulate a thousand users to use this system at the same time. Okay, use a uh, load testing, right? Here we use some tools like JMeter. This will be covered in our future classes when we talk about performance testing. And uh, another one is a system shall display the request the patient information in five seconds. Factor is performance efficiency. efficiency. Sub factor is time behavior, right? Evaluation metric, response time. Verification methods, we can do system testing. We can do load testing to verify the time behavior. So that's about the, the five ones uh, uh, in the from the last uh, exercise, so you also added a, a few a few more core goals for maintainability because I think uh, some students may have some questions about maintainability. Right? Uh, maintainability. Uh, so there are different core goals for maintaining. Uh, uh, here we consider three sub factors. So one is a testability, second one is a modifiability, third one is a module modularity. For testability. So we have a core goal, which is uh, the regression test shall be performed within 10 minutes. We want to finish the regression test within 10 minutes. Uh, so what is regression test? Basically, every time you make a new update to your system, you want to run existing test cases to verify that your new change wouldn't uh, break the existing system, right? So that's a regression test. We should be able to run this regression test within 10 minutes because you want to commit your code very quickly after you make changes. So it shouldn't take too long, right? Um, so evaluation metric is a testing time, the time of running the regression testing, right? R verification method is just run regression testing. It's easy. For modifiability, we can or consider one quality goal is to 
The code changes to the system shall not introduce more than one bug on average. So each code commit shouldn't introduce more than one bug into the system. Okay, how we can measure it? Uh, what's the metric? Metric can be average bugs introduced by a commit, right? How how we can verify it? Here we cannot run testing. Uh, one way is to analyze the coaching history. We we'll look at the coaching history. We we'll look at for each commit how many bugs are introduced after this commit. The, this history can be uh, obtained from, for example, GitHub commit history or other version control system, right? The last one is modularity. Modularity is basically like how how well you organize your the different modules of your system so that uh, within one module, the the functionalities are very cohesive. But uh, between these different modules, the coupling is very low, right? So basically, you want one module to do one thing, and the and the less relationship or dependency between different modules. That's you want to improve your modularity, right? For example, we define a cortical, one cortical as a, the module shall depend on less than five other modules. The module shall be used by less than five other modules, right? Have two metrics, standard metrics. One is a uh, efferent coupling, which is uh, the number of uh, um, how many other modules this module depends on? That's a fervent coupling. Another one is an afferent coupling, which is a module, the number of modules that depends on this current module. That's just afferent coupling. How can you evaluate? We cannot run testing. You cannot run testing to find it. So here we need to use a code analysis tools. Here we can use uh, some static analysis tools, such as JRTCAT RT, Architect. So this tool can help you analyze the static metrics, right? For example, these two metrics mentioned here, or length of code, the complexity of the code. Okay, this is the verification method. So we talk about different verification methods by testing, or sometimes you can by review, right? Here we didn't list uh, the case for review. I uh, can analyzing the source code, analyzing the history. So these are different uh, verification strategies or methods. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions regarding this part? Yes. Okay. Uh, first question to know that why don't we use the false torrents as a sub factor? Uh, why don't we? Why don't we use what? Why don't we use the false torrents sub factor for the Quality goal for which for which quality factor? I mean, for which quality goal? Um, for as you know, we are here. We have a different quality sub factors, including maintainability, testability, modularity. So he, he's concerning about reliability as a, as a two for quality and sub factor. Sorry, I, I don't quite understand. So it's, yeah, yes, real, reliability and availability are in together. Okay, so it's concerned why we don't have reliability and fault tolerance together as a sub factor. Oh, fault tolerance. False, yeah, I understand your question now. So you hear you, you mean why we, for reliability, right? So exactly. why, for reliability, why, we, why don't we consider the fault tolerance? Uh, false tolerance, right? Exactly. Yeah. So here we show some examples of this. Uh, so here we show some examples. We don't show the, all the quality factors and all the quality sub factors. Uh, for example, you can define, you can have another software, a quality sub factor for tolerance or time to recover, right? Or oh, sorry, like a, 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 what is that? It's a repairability, right? Recoverability, right? So those are sub factors of reliability. Uh, so you should consider all the uh, sub factors uh, as many as possible. Here I only use one example, but because for this quality goal, it's, uh, it's about availability, right? So we can consider the fault tolerance and reliability together 
in order to say our, our system is reliable. We can consider the fault tolerance. It means that how our system can tolerate the fault. For example, yeah. 99% as availability could be also fault tolerance because the server is down and it can be recovered. Right. Uh, within reliability, you can consider multiple sub-factors. Here, this is availability, right? You can consider another one, fault tolerance. For example, uh, whether you, when, you, when, you, when you give a, a wrong input, whether the system can still behave, whether they, whether they can still have expected results, right? That's okay. fault tolerance. You can add that one into this table. Uh, does that answer your question? Sure, thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, do we have any other questions? I think it's all good. Okay, thanks. And also, uh, yeah, for for the uh, assignment, that I I think I mentioned in on Slack. I I, I want to say so we we have a, a a template for the for TB one, right? You can that template is a uh, is not a, a mandatory you don't have to follow that template but that that one can give some of your guidance some suggestions on, on how to write your tp1 report so there i have also have some examples of these uh, factors sub factors evaluation metrics corticals okay yeah it's posted on moodle okay you can check it on moodle Uh, another exercise that we have left from last week is uh, about the black box testing. How to use equivalent, equivalent, equivalence partitions or equivalent classes to design our test cases, right? Uh, so our question is, we want to consider a web page for inputting a student's middle term exam, the final exam grades for a, a course. So the web page has four inputs. The first input uh, is a text box for student ID. Students can be six or seven digits. Uh, another input is a text box for a course number, exactly four digits, like uh, eight, three, seven, one, right? And also another textbook, text box for the middle term grid or the final grid. They are using uh, the, the same text box. The middle term grid is from zero to 20, and the final grid is from zero to 80. And we need a final text box for specifying whether it's middle term or final. That is for the grid recording system, right? So you are required to design test cases for a web page using the partition testing strategy. Um, you need to identify equivalent, equivalence partitions and provide your test cases for testing the input. Okay. So what are what are the equivalent classes? Equivalence classes. Um, so for each input. We need to find the, uh, for each input variable, we need to find the valid classes, the valid equivalent classes, uh, and valid border, oh, sorry, uh, invalid classes as well. And for valid classes, we need to find uh, uh, the valid values or high p values, right? And we need to also uh, find the uh, marginal values or border values. And for, we also need to have uh, uh, values for invalid classes where you have value for each invalid class, okay? Um, for example, for student ID, so we, we can have uh, equivalence partitions uh, uh, like this. We, the first part is, uh, is uh, any, any six digits, right? That's a valid input for student ID or any seven digits as another valid uh, um, partition, right? Valid input, so so we can have uh, some test cases using the valid values. Uh, the valid value can be like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, right? And if that's for the six digits partition. For seven digits partition, we can use uh, valid values like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can have different values as long as they are valid six or seven digits values. And we need to also consider the border values for each partition. We consider border values for six digit partition border values are zero 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 six zeros and uh, another is six nines right and for seven digits the singer 
seven zeros or seven nines. Invalid classes. So here, consider two invalid classes. The first one is the other number of digits, right? For example, five digits, one, two, three, four, five, or any other numbers. And also, the second invalid class is uh, letters included, right? Like A1234, that's invalid, it's another invalid class. We should consider the value from each invalid class, right? So here we consider invalid values of uh, these two. And uh, similarly, for course number, we have equivalent classes. Uh, because it requires four digits, so, so we have only one equivalent class, so four digits. Value value, it can be like 80. So here, we need to, so here, this, this equivalent class is for existing courses, four digits, existing courses, right? So value, the value is uh, 8371, right? Uh, here, we don't have E because of our requirements will have four digits only. And uh, we don't have border values here because it's not continuous, it's uh, discrete. So we don't have border values. For invalid classes, we can have uh, four digits non-existing courses. For example, 0000, zero, zero, zero may not be a, a valid course, may not be an existing course. Other number of digits, three digits, five digits, for example, any example, right? And the letters included is a third partition. For example, B134 is not a valid course, right? And grid, we have two uh, valid uh, equivalence classes. Also, two invalid classes. We choose this valid values, border values, and uh, invalid values in our test cases. The type, only one valid equivalent class, which is uh, either middle term or final, right? And the valid value, middle term or final, can use. Uh, we better test all, both of them because, uh, yeah. And the border value, we don't have border values. And invalid classes, any other strings or, or, or digits, right? So this is how we design our uh, equivalent classes and how we choose the values for test cases. We need to consider value values, border values from each value class. And we need to consider um, invalid value from in each invalid class, right? Is there any question regarding equivalent classes and the choice of the test cases? Uh, I mean, the choice of the, the values of each equivalent class. Okay, and uh, for how we choose test cases, we should consider all equivalent classes, valid classes, valid border cases, uh, valid cases, valid border cases, invalid uh, cases, right? I, so here we don't show a detailed example. Uh, the example is very similar to the uh, previous example we have shown in the previous class. Uh, this, this, this is the example I show here. Um, basically, we just change it to four another four different uh, inputs. And also we, we have different uh, values for those equivalent classes and in, in value classes. And we, we choose test cases for value cases, value border cases, and in value cases. We cover all the equivalent classes. Okay. Uh, so any, any questions for uh, equivalent uh, testing strategy for this exercise. Okay, no question. Okay, I uh, let's go to today's exercises. I uh, so so this this basically some you want I want you to uh, pra practice the use of some tools, right? I uh, I I don't want you to go do it now. You can do it after the class. Right? So the first one is a peer code review of GitHub. Uh, so I think uh, each, you have a project team, right? For your sums, you have GitHub project, right? When you make a commit or pull request to your team's GitHub project, and invite your team members to review your commit or pull request through GitHub. Fix 
comments from your team members and the read commit your code or resubmit or approve request. And then finally, integrate code review into your continuous integration. Uh, any questions here? If anything is not clear, just tell me. Uh, I think there's some parts you need to do some Google search to find uh, how exactly to, to do it, okay? Um, this is also a good practice for you to uh, conduct your, your assignments, right? So you, you, you also you have a teamwork and uh, when you make some change, you invite your teammates to have a review. Okay, next, or some, next uh, exercise is uh, for yourself is to use a static analysis tool to find the defects of an open source system. For example, you can use a find box to find uh, the defects of the Java open source project. First step is choose one of your favorite open source projects. Second step, choose a static analysis tool to analyze, analyze its code and review the produced st static analysis report. So basically this, uh, this exercise is for you to have an understanding of what static code analysis looks like and how you may use it to improve the quality of your system, okay? That's it, and uh, any questions? Okay, uh, next class, next class we, we, we will have, um, we have uh, our first quiz. This first quiz will cover the topics of our first three lectures from introduction to uh, today's topic, including introduction to SQA, including testing, and including our reviews, inspections, audits, okay? And uh, so we will have uh, like one hour to conduct our first quiz and it will be, uh, I think it will be uh, the last hour of the class, of next class, okay. Okay, so if there's, there's no any other question, we, we just end the lecture today. Okay, thank you for attending to this class. I'll see you next week. And uh, remember on this Thursday, we will have our, our second live session. And uh, from then on, we'll have our live sessions every other week on even weeks, okay? And during the live session, I, so I, the TA will review uh, some of the key points covered in the previous um, live session and also uh, whenever you have any questions regarding the assignment, so you may raise your questions and how to, about how to use the tools, for example, how to um, how to finish each step of your assignments. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Okay. Uh, there's a yeah. Please go ahead. Yes, there, there is a question in the in the chat. Someone asking if the uh, what will be the format of the quiz. Um, so the format of a quiz, I uh, there will be a. Uh, so you need to pay attention to the exercises, to, uh, the in class exercises. I uh, this for example, so the exercise we talk about today, right, can be some some long questions, problem solving questions. There could be some uh, shorter questions like uh, multiple choice, choice questions. So two types, basically. Uh, so multiple choice questions and uh, this open problem solving questions. Okay. Okay, thank you. No problem, thanks. Um, Okay.
Uh, thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. See you next week.